Welcome to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Three races remain in the 2017 NASCAR Pinty Series season. Alex LaVey has controlled the points lead since late July, but this short track racer has done anything but points race. Kevin Lacroix has raced his way into championship contention on the strength of three wins and consistent top five finishes. But this points chase has erupted into a battle of epic proportions among two of Canada's top racers. It's been a seesaw battle for the points chase between Alex LeBay of Victoriaville and Kevin Lacroix of St. Eustache. These two Quebec racers were brought up with different backgrounds. LeBay, a tough-nosed, smart short tracker, while Lacroix steadies himself on the circuits. Each pride themselves as race contenders each time they hit the track. With the title chase heating up, tempers have started to flare. And LeBay with a run on the inside, contact into turn two, Lacroix up the racetrack. Last week in Riverside, the fuel was thrown on the fire, the LeBay Lacroix feud. And LeBay gets to the back of the 74 and he moves him. Kevin Lacroix closing. Oh, right in the driver's side door, LeBay. There's no love lost between these two, that's for sure. And did he join this the more, Jim? When it happens to him, he's the first, first one to cry like a baby. Now, the grudge match moves on to the twists and turns of Canada's most famous road course. These 10 turns will be the basis of what may be Canada's most bitter championship chase. We're at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park as TSN brings you the Total 200. Welcome to the 11th race of the NASCAR Pinty Series in 2017. We're getting set for 51 action-packed laps on a historic track here in Bowmanville, Ontario. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross, Todd Lewis, and Clinton Jeffrey, both patrolling the pits for us here today. But Adam, if we look back to last week in Riverside, Nova Scotia, it was anything but a normal race. We had two hard competitors end up with pretty broken up race cars. It was a classic short track battle. It had all the top NASCAR storylines. A bump and run pass by Alex LeBay on Kevin Lacroix in the final corner of the race. Earned him his fourth win of the year and overheated Kevin Lacroix on the cool down lap. What was supposed to be a post race dump wound up being a violent tire climbing wreck. It cost Lacroix financial penalty and 10 points in the championship standing. And it's that points penalty that has really hurt him. With just three races remaining, he's now 36 points back of Alex LeBay for that championship lead. And what it opens up is the battle for second place in the points. It's dropped Lacroix right back to Caden Lapsovich and DJ Kennington, who had loved to climb the ladder. LP Dumoulin is right there as well. But this is just more than on the track. It's actually gone through the Quebec media, through social media as well. LeBay and Lacroix have been at each other all week long. As a matter of fact, the Lacroix side has opened up a GoFundMe account to help pay for that NASCAR fine. Call it a feud, call it a battle, whatever cliche you choose to use, Dave, it's not going away anytime soon. And with more on the LeBay Lacroix storyline, let's send it down to Clinton. Well, in case things aren't toxic and uncomfortable enough, the two camps have been pitted beside each other all weekend. Crew chiefs have pretty much had their heads in the game. They haven't spent too much time talking to each other. We're going to watch how this plays out today. Those are two level-headed, long-career crew chiefs in the pits of Alex LeBay and Kevin Lacroix. They see the big picture, and I think they'll be vital in trying to ease tensions among the entire race team. Earlier, Todd caught up with both Alex LeBay and Kevin Lacroix to find out how are things going to play out today. Alex, it's been an active couple of weeks between you and Kevin Lacroix. How do you focus on the race today and put all of that out of your mind? Uh, I mean, we just don't have to really think about it. We just got to focus on, our, on what we got to do. I mean, we did a, uh, all the team did a really good job this year. We have all top five, so we just want to focus on the, on the same thing. Be there at the end, get some top, five, top fives and some wins, and uh, that's our main goal. Kevin, there's been a lot of conversation between you and Alex over the last couple of weeks. You've been very vocal. Do you put that aside today and focus on the job you have to do? Well, uh, for sure, I'm starting on the pole, uh, being up front, so I'll concentrate on the, on my race. And he's uh, he's at the back, so we'll see uh, what happens when he gets back to the top. But uh, yeah, for sure, uh, I have a good, tar a good car today, so uh, try to win it. 
And one thing we should say, it is going to be an interesting 51 laps here in the Total 200. We have weather rolling in that could affect today's race just like it did back in May. We know who was fastest yesterday in practice on a dry racetrack. Today it could be completely different in the wet, and that'll open the championship battle right up again. Anything can happen on a wet racetrack. In qualifying yesterday, 25 cars lined up to take time, and actually in the early going, it was the 95 of Anthony Simone who had a very quick time and that innovative plumbing Dodge. And then out comes Kevin Lacroix, the number 74 bumper-to-bumper -bumper Dodge. Blistered a new track record, a minute 22.521 seconds to put his car on the E3 spark plug pole position. So where is Alex LeBay? Well, the number 32 had some problems yesterday. In practice, it was a motor issue. In qualifying, it was a transmission problem. He'll start at the rear of the field, which can pretty much guarantee that today's race is going to be exciting. Our biggest storylines are bookends. Lacroix at the front, LeBay at the back. I can't wait wait to get this started the drivers are buckled in and ready to go and when we return we'll bring you the start of the total 200 here on tsa the 11th race of the nascar pinty series is brought to you by mopar we built it we know it by pinty's making great food fun by spectra premium Automotive parts developed and engineered in Canada. And by Silver Wax, a premium Canadian car care product. Cars are out on this racetrack, and as you can see, it will be a wet start to this race here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Dave, I think that's exactly the key. It's going to be a wet start, but we have any, every indication to show it may not stay wet for the entire duration of the race. Well, Adam, it is important to note that it has stopped raining currently, but all around this circuit, there are pools of water, so the drivers will have to be careful in the early going. Let's take a look at today's Mopar starting lineup. We know who the pole sitter is. It's Kevin Lacroix on track record time. Anthony Simone starting in the outside of the front row. Row number two has Alex Tagliani in the 18 and DJ Kennington, driver of the 17. Back to the third row brings us L.P. Dumoulin in the 47 and Andrew Ranger in the Mopar 27. Row number four, Gary Clute in the Pioneer Pools 59, Mark Antoine Cameron in the GM Paye 22. Row number five, former winner here, Jason Hathaway in the three and Matthew Scannell back behind the wheel of the 0-2. J.F. Dumoulin pilots the 0-4, and Caden Lapsovich, your defending series champion in the 76. Row 7 is Peter Klutz in the 42, and Adam Andretti returns to us in the 44. In the 8th row, Adam Martin in the 9, Joey McComb in the 25. Good field of cars here. We'll go back to row number 9. Noel Dowler in the 5, and Trevor Monaghan in the 21 makes his first start. Jocelyn Fecto in the 77, and Brandon White in the 99 make up row number 10 today. Row 11 has Martin Cote in the 11 and David Thorndike in the 67. And row 12, we've got Larry Jackson in the 8 and points leader Alex LeBay in the 32. And all by himself in row number 13, the 43 of Robin Buck, a veteran here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. So keep an eye on him. And we should note Jocelyn Fecto in the 77 will not start today's race. Engine troubles that they could not fix, Dave. Take a look at today's E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. As we mentioned, it's drizzly, but 51 laps on tap here today. Kevin Lacroix has been undefeated here the last couple of races, looking to go three wins in a row at the same racetrack, which will tie Andrew Ranger's record. And with more on today's race, let's go down to talk. The first race of the season here at CTMP was one of the most dramatic we've ever seen. The conditions set up for the scene today. They will start on the wet weather tires. The track is damp. How long until it dries? And when do teams make the choice to come in and switch to slick tires for faster laps around this course? And will it stay dry for the duration? We're in for 51 exciting laps. Adam Andretti is back here in the 44 car today, racing with the NASCAR Pinty Series. He's mentioned many times he loves racing with this group of guys and always runs well here at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. They had a problem with the stuck throttle today. Crew feels they've got it sorted out. Watch for the 44 as Andretti 
takes it to the Andretti straight here at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. And we should mention, too, that Adam Andretti excited to make a start on an oval at the series finale at Jucasa Motor Speedway later on in September. September 23rd is the date for that one. That one should be exciting. And driving a car prepared by Scott Stackley, you know it's going to be a contender. There's a good look at Alex LeBay, your points leader, coming into this one. He looks cool and calm and collected, but he has a lot of cars to get through in order to get to the front of the field. Working their way through turn number 10, looking for the green flag here in the Totel Courts 200 at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. It's Kevin Lacroix. It's Anthony Simone. They make their way out of the front chute, looking for green. It's up, and we're underway. A slippery turn one as the field works its way through. Great start by Kevin Lacroix. Look at the line Kevin Lacroix took for turn number one. It's off the inside groove. He's out on the outside away from all that rubber buildup, but still, you see the cars getting crisp and crossed up all the way through this track. The big thing is the horsepower. You cannot get on the throttle oh, too quickly. Oh. Anthony Simone with a big slide up a turn two. He almost got into that runoff area on the outside of turn two. He's on the inside of Alex Tagliani, but it's like Tagliani's going to take over that spot, chasing Kevin Lacroix. Not turning any RPMs in these engines. They'll grab the next gear as soon as they can. That avoids tire spin, gives them better traction. Speaking of traction, there goes Andrew Ranger for second. No surprise there, the driver of the Mopar Dodge, the number 27 of Andrew Ranger, the only driver to win three consecutive times, and he's done it right here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. And we should say three consecutive times on the same racetrack, because DJ Kennington, of course, with his five in a row years ago, consecutive races. Look at that gang of cars, three wide, four wide down the street. And look at who's in there, the 32 k and Ford Fusion of Alex LeBay looking for a way through. He's inside, he's outside. He wants to get to the front. He started in row number 12. The three car just ahead of him started in row five, Dave. An incredible drive here on lap number one. For your points leader, coming into this one, LeBay on the outside in turn number eight will pick up a couple more spots. Right behind Adam Martin in the Johnsonville number nine will swing to the inside of him in turn number nine. But Kevin Lacroix opening an advantage quickly over Andrew Ranger more than three seconds in one lap. He's hoisted the mainsail in these wet conditions and he is setting a torrid pace in the early going here at the Total Courts 200. Well, right on board with Gary Clute. He's going to have this view for as many laps as anybody today. He runs in the eighth position, but he's running our race, 51 laps, and then he's going to get behind the wheel of a Camping World Truck Series car and run the truck race this afternoon. I'm at the 04, though, of J.F. Dumoulin, the Spectra Premium Dodge, having a solid outing so far this afternoon. As you can see, the 32 of LeBay has gone around the 02. That's for 11th spot. So LeBay, after starting at the tail of the field, is already knocking on the door of the top ten. L listen to this, Dave. And watch. It really is a ballet dance, isn't it? The hands have to work with the feet and the sound of the engine as Caden Lassner's completely sideways out of turn five. So is DJ Kennington, but Alex LeMay goes around both of them. Well, it stopped DJ Kennington's momentum out of turn five, and now the 32 is up in the ninth position, believe it or not. Unbelievable drive. As we say it, there, there really is no rain falling. So what we watch for is that spray to stop. As long as there's that bit of a mist off the racetrack, these rain tires are doing their job. When that mist stops, we're going to see someone roll the dice and go to slick tires. What's interesting about the Goodyear compound that NASCAR brings to this track is that it's essentially a treaded slick tire that the NASCAR Pinty Series generally runs anytime they stop here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. So it doesn't go away as quickly as a soft compound rain tire. We'll take a quick break. Lacroix is your leader in the early going. Welcome back 
Pacific Canadian Tire Motorsport Park as the field completes lap four. We see the 95 of Anthony Simone now challenging LP Dumoulin. That's for fourth spot. You know, Anthony Simone, of course, started in the front row. He was one-tenth of a mile per hour off Kevin Lacroix's record time. So Simone was very, very fast. And he's doing all sorts of driving. He has been more sideways than anybody else in the field here in the early going. He's driving his tail off and losing positions. Now, you remember, L.B. Dumoulin does have wins here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in the past. And, and the benefit of today racing in the rain is that this series raced in the rain here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in the spring. One driver who didn't, Mark Antoine Cameron, but he's pretty decent on these road courses. He's such a gifted driver, and I'm so excited to see GM Paye on board with his race team. But equally as important, on board with the series. GM dealer getting involved with the series I think is really cool. It is nice to see that bow tie on the front of one of these race cars in the NASCAR Pinty series, but you really have to have some guts to lean into turn number eight after coming down the Andretti straightaway at top speed and hope your car sticks. They all have done that so far. But well, Simone with a big wiggle in turn number nine. Yeah, Dave, knock on wood to this point, we really haven't seen a car get off the racetrack because wet pavement is hard to drive on. Wet grass is impossible. And Kevin Lacroix, 4.8 second lead over Andrew Ranger. There you see it on the ticker across the top of your screen. And he has an 11 second gap back to fourth place, LP Dumoulin. Yeah, an impressive lead. Alex LeBay up to seventh. Great run for the driver of the Can Am Kappa Ford. You never hear our engines rev up that slowly. Just so slowly getting in the throttle as fast as you can with the amount of traction they've got. Almost missing the line. Remember, Tank Leandy destroyed his car here right in that spot in May. Well, LeBay trying to move around the 67 of David Thorndike. Thorndike was sort of holding his line through that turn, and LeBay had to figure out a way around. He went in the offshoot. This racetrack is four lanes wide, and LeBay just switched six lanes at once. <laughs> That's how far off the track he was in the runoff of two. As we ride along with Dave Thorndike there, now we're looking at a couple of young guns. Adam Martin in the Johnsonville 9, Matthew Scannell in the Omfix 02. They're battling for the 13th position just inside the top 10. Both cars prepared out of the mixed motorsports stable. Here's another good battle between the 43 of Robin Buckets. A dice for 15. You got Jason Hathaway in there and Peter Flute in the 42. Robin Buck had problems yesterday, Dave, the likes of which we have never seen. Spit a drive shaft out of the race car. That's not entirely abnormal. It's scary, because when the drive shaft spits out, it twists up like a pretzel, and it took out the transmission, broke the bell housing, broke the back of the engine block. He basically spit the entire drivetrain out of that car. And then the crew went to work to try and get it replaced and get him back in the race for today. So they had several hours to do so, and it was great work by that team to complete the task. Alex Tagliani has caught up to Andrew Ranger in that battle for second. Having a look to the inside, exiting turn number one. They're six and a half seconds behind the race leader, Kevin Lacroix, having their own quiet little battle here. Well, Lacroix is opening up his lead by about a second a lap. That's how much quicker than the rest of the field the driver of the 74 is. You have to be nervous about that kind of pace. As the track continues to dry, these groove tires will wear off in a hurry. There's the hardest working man at the racetrack, Anthony Simone, to the inside, to the outside. Right now, trying the outside of LP Dumoulin in a battle for fourth. Well, that's not a bad place to be in a rainy, wet track as we've got right here. It's ten You tend to call the outside groove on a road course in the rain. That is the rain groove. And that's what some of these drivers are taking. Simone going outside to inside to try and get a run into turn five. A kamikaze move to the outside. And I don't know if this is the adequate way to say it, but on a wet track, you basically drive in the marbles. You get more grip in the marbles than you do in the greasy rubber laid down groove of a racetrack when there's water on it. Lurking just behind that battle, though, is the 32 of Alex LeBay. And you can see up on the outside, the 99 of Brandon White is trying to get out of the way. He saw Cameron was going to tuck in behind, but had to think better of that. Dave, I would be happy if we watched this whole race from the onboard of Anthony Simone. Down the straightaway, this car should have spun out eight times. 
Well, there's the 47 doing a pretty good wiggle in turn number eight, and there goes Simone again. Unbelievable. The, the fact that he can save it after doing that and still have the confidence to go back and get on the gas equally as hard the next time says, says something about the mindset of Anthony Simone as we go back to the battle for second. Yeah, and it's one we've been watching lap after lap. Alex Dagliani tucked right in behind the 27, so it's a Hall of Famer in the 18, a potential future Hall of Famer in the 27, and they seem to be glued together today. Yeah, Tagliani, you don't see him stalk someone very often. Alex, if he's fast enough, makes a pass, or he doesn't. Let's head down pit side, check in with Todd, who's standing by with a good Canadian kid who's made his name and country proud in the American ranks of the NASCAR community has come back up north this weekend. Todd? Yeah, guys, with Marty Gaunt from Gaunt Brothers Racing, you'll be participating in the truck race. We've been taking a lot of Canadian talent to help yeah. give them a little exposure in the U.S. and also checking out this NASCAR Pinty Series. Yeah, no, it's great to watch uh, the Pinty Series, especially race in the rain. Uh, we've never raced in the rain in the truck series, so obviously DJ's driving our truck, so we thought we'd check out to see how he does in uh, the pre-race, if you will, before we get ready to get the truck race going. What have you learned about this Pinty Series, and what do you like about it so far? Uh, I love the Pinty Series. You know, we fielded a car in it four or five years ago, and I would say never, never say never that we'd be back again to do it. I uh, love Canada, spent 25 years here. Uh, we're in a good opportunity now that we can give some people some opportunities down in the States, so uh, I love everything about it. Good to have you back. Right, thank you. He's been down south for a long time, Dave but he still says about like a true Canadian. He really does. Of course, he fielded cars for Jason Bowles and for John Gaunt for several years in the NASCAR Pinty Series, so it's great to see somebody like Marty Gaunt back in the pit area. That's a battle for fifth between Mark Antoine Cameron and the 95 of Anthony Simone. This entire race, Anthony Simone has been within a car length of somebody. Right behind L.P. Dumoulin, he was right behind Tag the Annie for, for a while. Now right behind Mark Antoine Cameron, almost rubbing the inside wall through turn number one. Well, we talked about the durability of these Goodyear Eagle tires, but Anthony Simone is testing them in the early going of this Total Ports 200 here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Kevin Lacroix with a huge lead in the early going. the NASCAR Pinty Series, Kevin Lacroix from St. Estache, Quebec, leads the Total Quartz 200. We've completed nine laps here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. The 22 GM Pie machine of Mark Antoine Cameron pulls out of his sixth place spot. He's headed Todd Lewis's way. Todd? And here's the first. It's the 22 making the stop for fuel. Looks like it will only be fuel at this time. He'll be good to go the distance. Still no switch to the wet weather tires. That's an aggressive fuel stop, lap 10. Well, that's the beauty of this race, is you can play a little bit of a strategy game and see how it works out. You'll merge in just behind the 44 of Adam Andretti. And there is your race leader, the bumper to bumper, number 74 of Kevin Lacroix. So dominant uh, so far today. And there's a, a tail light on these race cars when they race in the rain. Just so fans watching might be confused, it is not a brake light. So you see it flashing. They're not pumping the brakes. It is just literally a flashing red light for visibility. The Johnsonville number nine of Adam Martin is down pit lane. So will he take some tires or will it be fuel only? That answers the question. The can goes in the right rear here on the road courses. Of course, fuel goes in the left rear on the oval tracks. But Adam Martin will be released from his pit stop. Martin heads back out on the track. You can see the EpiPen 18 crew on the wall with gas can in hand. They're ready to fuel up Tagliani when he stops. And there's Kevin Lacroix going to put a lap on Martin Cote in the 11. And here comes Tagliani, the Lowe's EpiPen Dodge, number 18, flying down pit lane, and he'll find a stop. Alex Tagliani relinquishes his position. He makes his scheduled fuel stop. He, too, will return to the battle on wet weather tires. The fuel man gets the tap on the head, it's time to go, and Tagliani down and away back into this one. Fritz almost didn't get out of the way of the front grill there. You see, he was cleaning off the debris from the front grill when they pulled the gas can out. That's usually time to go. Tagliani cut him some slack and let him get back out from in front of the car. Well, that's the thing. You mentioned that they run a groove that's kind of out in the marble, so you pick up a lot of that dirt in the grill. You will pick up quite a bit as we look at Alex LeBay. What an impressive drive up to the sixth position 
He was in the top 10 after one lap. You see the wiper going on the 95 of Anthony Simone, but you also see the sky starting to lighten up around Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Whoa. And we got one around. That's Dave Thorndike. I believe that's turn number three. Captain fire and manages to get going. I don't know how he got into the grass and managed to get out of the grass uphill. How do you drive a car this heavy out of the grass, wet, up a hill? And how do you come to a rest and not catch the wall? Let's ride on board with Thorndike. So we're coming out of turn two. He's he was trying to get out of the way. You, you could see him look in the mirror and, and hit the throttle and turn the wheel a little bit. And it just got him a little bit off his line and around he went. And now the 32 is down pit lane. So your points leader coming into this event, Alex LeBay will be trying to adhere to the pit lane speed limit. Todd's in his pit. Todd. Fuel stop for the 32. Alex LeBay on a huge charge up into the top 10. That back of the row starting spot not hurting him. And Dave, you saw LeBay repeatedly looking at his tachometer for pit road speed. Do you know why? Well, that's how they set the speed limit. Also because the trucks are in town this weekend, which means they have different means of timing pit road. They have radar guns. They have different ways for the Pinty series to control their speed on pit road. The trucks actually use electronic timing. You can't get away with anything. These drivers have to be on their best behavior coming in and out of the pits. Once again, this battle between the 47 and the 95 has picked up once again. These two haven't been separated by much since the drop of the green flag here today. Only 12 cars remain on the lead lap at the moment. J.F. Dumoulin, the final car on that lead lap. Simone sailing it down into turn eight. And you can see there are some dry spots starting to pop up. You saw it just turning into turn number eight, but as you catch that curving, that's going to be very, very slick. L.P. Dumoulin peeling off into the pits, and there's Lacroix. Scheduled fuel stop for the leader. Makes his marks, the fuel goes in, he's on his way, quick stop by the 74 team. They've done that before, the 27 of Andrew Ranger is also in, taking on some fuel. Ranger waiting for the word to go, he jumps back, he puts it in gear and heads back into this race and the 47 is in as well. LP Dumlin, all these teams taking fuel, cleaning it off the front grill. The visibility today, these teams have really done a good job figuring out racing in the rain. Years ago, you would not have been able to see the inside of the car because the windshield would be so foggy. These drivers have the opportunity to see where they're going now, Dave. Well, to give you an idea of how big a lead the 74 had built up before these pit stops, he still has not relinquished the lead. Kevin Lacroix is your race leader. Came down, took fuel in the race car, left the pits at pit road speed, still got out ahead of the 18 and the 27 by 12 seconds. <laughs> he is putting a beating on this field. drivers really attack. You drive it in aggressively, you grab first gear and hammer down. Good look at Caden Lapsovich. This whole group is a battle for eighth position. Lapsovich with some motor troubles in practice yesterday. They had to put a new bullet under the hood of that 76. And it seems to be working out pretty well for them today. Having a good run right now. More action in the pits. Well, the number three car in here in the pits. They clean off the grill. Just a splash of fuel here for the three car. He is away. Right behind him, Anthony Simone will pit and pull this car here into pit road. Fuel only for Simone. It'll be a splash of gas and go. Not necessarily an overly quick stop, not compared to the 74 of Lacroix, but they didn't make any mistakes. And that's important in a pit stop race. You don't want to make any costly errors. And a hasty exit, just like he does on the racetrack. Hammer down when the time comes. Anthony Simone back on the racetrack. He doesn't know any other speeds. He just knows go. I, I love watching him. All year long, I've been calling. This could be Anthony Simone's breakout day. And it hasn't happened, so I'm not going to say it, Dave, but he is a driver who is due a great run. 74 goes around the 42 of Peter Klute. Klute currently in 16th position. He has yet to make a pit stop, and Lapsovich is here. Third and fourth in the point standings. Both make
making pit stops. Caden Lapsovich, a brand new motor, getting fresh fuel. The 17th TJ Kennington also on for fuel and now away. Like clockwork on pit road, Lapsovich and Kennington, one behind the other. So they both burned about the same amount of fuel because they both took on about the same amount of fuel there, Dave. And there you see Noel Dowler in the five making a start here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. And he, too, will run the final race of the year at Chukasa. I expect a lot of teams like Dowler, who appreciate the history of the sport, will really want to be there. That's a big day. And Dowler had some great runs on the oval track races when we went out west on the western swing. Saskatoon, Edmonton, he had a great car. His father had some success as well at the old Cayuga Speedway, so no surprise they'd want a Dowler name in the field. And the 42 of Peter Clute will be in for his fuel stop this time in the epic race where a legendary motor car Chevrolet down and away, and he'll rejoin the field. Peter Clute, of course, the father of Gary Clute. Peter drives the 42. Gary drives the 59. Some of the happiest people you'll ever meet at the races. They, they are really pleasant people to be around. They love cars, and they love being in the NASCAR Pinty Series. You're right. Gary Clute, uh, known as the smiling assassin sometimes because he'll smile at you, but he races you very, very hard on the track. Just like he raced Alex LeBay hard coming right across the nose of the 32 as we look at Kevin Lacroix down the long back straightaway. Putting Jeffries on pit lane, more action down there. 25 car here in the pit stall. Crew just going to give a quick drink to the car and send them right back out. Joey McCall behind the wheel of the 25 with Canadian Tire on board and their maximum tool. So picking up a new sponsor for this race, big thumbs up to that team. They're huge in the marketing, marketing department, trying to bring new sponsors to NASCAR. Hey, Joey McCall works aggressively with Canada's best racing team. Trying to bring new names to the sport. Good to see him back behind the wheel, too. Yeah, he's a very capable race car driver, as is this man in the bumper-to-bumper -bumper Dodge. Kevin Lacroix with a 10 and a half second lead. He's still out in front. Alex Tagliani, Andrew Ranger, your top three. Welcome back to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in Bowmanville, Ontario, just outside of Toronto. I'm Dave Bradley, along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis, Clinton Jeffrey, both trackside for us today. It's a great battle for 10th we're watching here between DJ Kennington and the Castrol Dodge and Kate Lapsovich in the A Services Clean Flow Dodge. And if they need a little bit of motivation, Gary Clute about 20 car lengths ahead in the 59. Earlier on in this race, we spoke about the mist that comes off the back of these race cars. We're not seeing any more mist coming off these cars. That is a lot of dry pavement, Dave. Well, you can see the dark spots and you can see the light spots. This is not for position between Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22 and Jason Hathaway in the Kubota number three. What a nice move for the 22 to go around the outside. As this track starts to dry, the lap times will start to drop they will start to drop and they'll start to use up a lot more Goodyear rubber. Hathaway sitting in 16th spot as we ride on board. And there you see the 76 of Caden Lapsovich who blew a motor at longtime supporters Austin and Karen Jeffries from Ace Services stepped up. They actually purchased a new motor for Caden. Marty and Melina Robichaud from Auto Credit National have stepped up as well. That group will be on the hood of the 76 at St. Estash. So some good news for the Lapsovich team. Yeah, I'm talking to Austin from A Services. Their days go back to, to the time of Pinecrest Speedway. A big, long-time racing supporter. And wow, Caden Lapsovich was quite a ways behind Gary Clute just a lap ago. Now he's going around. And look at that blue sky in the horizon. It's right on board the 59 Pioneer family pools of Gary Clute as he's coming under some pressure from the 17 Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. So Lapsovich out in front, driving away a little bit. Gary Clute trying to hold off Kennington as Lapsovich still not quite able to get the power down. That's a battle for 10th spot. Kennington will look to what will be the inside groove in turn number eight. Now he tucks back into the draft down the Andretti straightaway. At this point in a lot of spots, the track is so dry that these groove tires won't get enough traction on the dry pavement as the smooth, slick racing tires. The thing is to try and build the heat in those slick tires without hitting any of the water to cool them off. So these teams appear ready to be holding off on that tire change for at least a couple more laps. I have a feeling once we see the first car come in for slick tires, just like the fuel stop, there's going to be a parade of race cars down pit road. No doubt. It only takes one to start the trend. But Kennington is working hard to try and get around the 59 of Gary Kluke 
Lundbeck Crossways off of turn number one. Cannington taking a peek to the inside of turn two. This racetrack is difficult to pass on when it's perfectly dry and you've got a faster race car. Put water on both sides of the groove. It is very narrow and very difficult to pass on. Robin Buck on a wet racetrack going a lap down is almost inconceivable. Yeah, it's a little shocking. Currently sitting in 13th position now, one lap down to the leader. So LaCroix went by. He has been lightning fast all day. He's not pulling away entirely from Buck just yet. And there you see just ahead is the Spectra Premium 04 of J.F. Jubilee. So he'll want to stay at least ahead of the leader or tucked in right behind. In the event we do get a caution, he'll be able to pick up the lucky duck. Look at the concentration of Kevin LaCroix. You know what I noticed was how far ahead his eyes were looking. You know, not looking straight ahead at where the car's going, but looking off to the right at where he's about to be, sizing up J.F. Dumoulin in the 0-4. And it looks like he might get him down the back straight away into turn number eight. The 0-4 is in 12th position, and it looks like smoke from the 43 of Robin Buck. Yeah, a little bit of smoke of the tail section of that race car. Didn't slow him down as he goes around the outside of J.F. Dumoulin as well. And that's for position. But was that a tire or was that a motor problem? On the 43, we'll have to keep an eye on it. Down through turn 10, J.F. Dublin. They're never very impressed. The lap car never likes it when they let the leaders go by and another lap car takes advantage of the situation and goes by. But it's one of those things you just have to suck up and live with, Dave. You can see the 09 of Adam Martin going past. He has locked up the Jostens Rookie of the Year award. So. A big tip of the cap to young Adam Martin as he has turned some heads here in 2017. You know, he's had some steady runs. They were hoping for some of the dynamic top five finishes they actually got last year, but it's been kind of a learning curve. Get to the finish, try and survive the races. It's not easy to race the full series consistently and do well. So you see this battle on the racetrack is not necessarily a battle for position. The 76 of Kate Lapsovich is in ninth spot. The 42 of Peter Klute is in 17th. If you want an update on where your favorite driver is right now, take a look at the ticker on the top of the screen. But the 32, your points leader coming to this event, is down pit lane. I have a feeling this is going to open up the floodgates, Dave. Todd Lewis is standing by. 32, the first to make the call to make the switch from the wet weather groove tires onto the slick tires. Alex LeBay had climbed into the top 10. Left side's going on, right side's will follow. Now he had to do something because he wasn't catching the 74 of Kevin Lacroix anymore as he did in the beginning. But he'll put some slick tires on and maybe he'll be able to close that gap a little bit quicker. Left front tire changer had some problems. And Gary Clute also down pit lane. The 59 car in the pits, they also will swap out the wet tires for the drives. So you're absolutely right, Adam. Well, look at how close Clute has pitted to the pit lane. That's a big problem for the crew. It won't be a huge deal in the cars here, but if he does that in the truck series race when 20 cars are on pit road, rather 20 trucks are on pit road, he could lose a lot more positions on the racetrack. As it is, that probably cost him about five seconds cost him track position, which is huge on this big track as Clute slowly making his way back out onto the racetrack. He's going to maintain that speed until pit exit, but there is your race leader, Kevin LaFont, who's still well out in front and a second faster than everyone else. Remember, he's still on range tires. Well, I have a feeling this will be the last lap where Kevin LaCroix is still a full second faster than the rest of the field. I'd love to see the difference between him and Alex LeBay on this lap. Noel Dowler in the Emco Dodge currently sitting in 18th position as he chases your leader. Watch his eyes. So far ahead of where the race car actually is. Looking so far right, he's almost blocked by his uh, containment seat. And that's every great race car driver will tell you. They might not even know that they're doing it, but their eyes will always be as far ahead as they can see. And they never blink. Check out that on Kevin Lacroix next time that we have that onboard shot. There's a good shot of the Omvic 02, the Leland Industries Ford Fusion of Matthew Skinnell. He's just ahead of this driver, the 22 of Mark N1 Cameron. Down no pit lane from 18th spot is Noel Dowler. Noel Dowler. Now they're taking on fuel. 
I'm sure they would have stopped for fuel by now, but maybe they didn't. A little bit of a different strategy on the MFP ring number five. See fuel pouring out of the overflow, getting that fuel cell packed tight, and the Mopar number 27, Andrew Ranger, is headed for his pit stop. Another taker for Slick Tires, the 27 along pit road. Zach Gill on the left front. They're changing the left sides, coming around now to do the right. But Roy on the rear is getting those tire changes made as Andrew Ranger waits patiently. This is the only track we visit all year where these teams will do a four tire stop on the same stop. Most tracks, they allow them to change two tires at a time. That's to save the team's money for having to bring all those people. Now, you saw the tire, the groove treaded tire, uh, going up on the pit wall for the 27 of Andrew Ranger, and it was pretty bare on the inside shoulder of that car, so he'd been working those tires pretty hard. Doesn't surprise me one bit, as Adam Andretti is down pit lane, putting on the slick tires on the Steckley Racing number 44 machine. Mike Knott, the crew chief on that team, so he'll keep, keep the pit crew orchestrated. You can see they're getting to work. It's sort of a part-time crew for Adam Andretti. They just want to make sure to get those lug nuts tight on the left front. Now go around to the right side. That's a fairly sluggish stop for this series, Dave. A little bit of a challenge there on the front tires, but they'll get them changed, do the job they can. 43 of Robin Buck also going to slicks, and here comes Dubelay. 0-4's turn to make his stop for brand new, fresh Goodyear tires. The slicks going on the left side for J.F. Dumoulin. Team will swing around and then switch over. Right side slicks coming out. We see a lot of cars on pit lane. Clute just went by. There's Adam Andretti rejoining the field. Have a look at the treads on those tires. They look pretty healthy, Dave. Actually, yeah, they're right up there, and that's coming off the left front side. The Pie Chevrolet 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron looking for his pit stall, maintaining that pit road speed as he starts to turn right. Well, it's a flurry of activity here in the pits. Everybody around the 22 getting ready to pit. Mark Andre Cameron in here. They will work on getting some new tires on this one and get them back out there. The famed number 22 of Scott Steckley still seeking his first road course victory. Randy Steckley overseeing the crew. Now on this 22, he's got a capable driver behind the wheel just looking for a little bit of luck here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. And here is your race leader in the bumper to bumper dodge. Kevin Lacroix will head down pit lane and he will finally make the switch to slick tires. Don Thompson Jr. in the 74 machine called the car to pit lane. Toss down there to call the action. No. It's been a perfect weekend for the 74 team. Left side tires going on. The crew working slowly, methodically. They're swinging around now. Right side fresh Goodyear's going on for that 74 as he looks for another victory here at CTMP. And you can see the Don Thompson influence on that crew, how quickly they are going. And the 18 of Alex Tagliani also with a well-orchestrated pit stop here down pit lane. They get the left side done now onto the right side. Despite the level of talent we have in our series, Dave, the bar for measuring success in this series was still set by Don Thompson Jr. and his five consecutive National Stock Car Racing Championships. Well, it's funny you talk about Don Thompson Jr. The 74 has been putting on a clinic here today. Thompson is with that team. Your new race leader, the 95 of Anthony Simone, is in a car built by Don Thompson Jr. or prepared by Don Thompson Jr. The 47 is in a car built by Don Thompson Jr. He does have his finger in a number of race teams, and there's a simple reason for it. He does some of the best work, Dave. There you see Matthew Skinnell in the mix motorsports Omvic Leland Ford Fusion. But there is a good look at your race leader. For the first time today, we can say we have somebody not named Lacroix at the front of the field. And DJ Kennington peels down pit road. Todd Lewis is there. One of the last to make the switch, the 17th car along pit road. Left side tires going on. They're taking their time. Wonder if this late change will help DJ Kennington in the late stages of this race. Maybe a little bit fresher rubber. Ted McAllister, the crew chief for that team, holding the car out on the racetrack on those wet weather tires for just a little bit longer. Maybe some strategy at play. Look at Simone going three wide in turn number three. He's still on wet tires on a dry track. The one-man highlight reel, Anthony Simone. Oh. Get her done on the outside. 
That's a great place to run on a wet racetrack. On a dry track, you're taking your chances way out there. But Simone's still up to speed. But that windshield wiper has not stopped. That would drive me crazy. Boy, he's hammering the curves. A 38-year-old from Bradford, Ontario, out in front here in Bowmanville. This is the 11th race of the 2017 NASCAR Baby Series Tour from Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Anthony Simone leads the Total Quartz 200. And there's not many cars on the track still on the treaded tires. Anthony Simone is making pretty good time. One other car that was on rain tires is on pit road right now. 76, a long pit road. The team goes to work on the left side. Car going up in the air. Fresh Goodyear Eagles going on the left side. And then they'll swing back to do the right. Was this the right call to wait this late in the race? I guess we'll see how the strategy plays out, guys. Well, a late race tire change one collapse of it to race at St. Eustache last year. There's not many more comparisons you can draw to this, but that is definitely one of them. We did have a problem while Lapsovich was in the pits, and it was a 59 of Clute. Look at the wild ride he took in turn eight. Holy moly! Lock it down and try and get a stop before the tire wall. Let's ride on board. He's going to want four fresh Goodyear tires, possibly a change of underwear, Dave. <laughs> Martin Cote in the 11 just came over enough and closed off the line that he was about to take. They made contact, and then he made contact with that outside wall. And you know what we didn't see from that view? That is the fastest point of any track we're going to visit this year, is exactly where Gary Clute crashed. The Wonder Red number eight, that's a good luck at Larry Jackson. Second place, Kevin Lacroix goes around. He's got the WeatherTech 47 in tow. We should mention that LP Dumoulin is down the lap to that driver as Anthony Simone continues to lead. Anthony's ahead by 16 seconds right now. We'll see how that gap continues to change as Larry Jackson gets out of the way of this driver, the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. And we should mention that the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron has just come out of serving a pit road penalty for speeding along pit lane. Tough break for that 22 team. The other story we should talk about is the 95 of Anthony Simone. When is he going to come in for tires, Dave? Well, that is the big question. You can see the car is working very well. He's putting competitive lap times down. Still about three seconds slower than Kevin Lacroix, but let's send it down to Clinton, who's in his pit talking with his crew chief. Clinton? with Greg Crucci for Anthony Simone. He's been having a good day leading. A lot of discussion. Are you guys going to come in or leave him out here as he's still leading? Well, we were thinking about bringing him down, but lap times aren't bad, so I think we're going to keep him out. Maybe try and catch a caution. So, fingers crossed in the 95 pit. I can't argue with the strategy. There's less than 10 cars on the lead lap. If they catch a caution, they're not going to drop that many spots. Their tires are going to be 10 laps fresher than everybody else on the racetrack. Unique here, the 47 of LP Dumoulin able to keep pace in the dry weather with the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Remember, Dumoulin a lap down to your race leader. And you're right, he's about 15 car lengths behind the leader. Kevin Lacroix 14 seconds behind. This will show us who's on the lead lap. Okay, right now they're all showing a lap down because Kevin Lacroix went by the start finish. They haven't or quite, Simone, rather, yeah, went by the start finish line. They haven't quite crossed to bring all those laps back up, but right on board with a bumper to bumper 74 dodge of Kevin Lacroix. So he's hunting right now. This is what he's doing. He knows he has to close that gap and get up to the leader. And you can hear the RPMs of the engine rise so much faster. As we look at this battle for third, Andrew Ranger has the position. They're really able to get on the throttle a lot harder at this point in the race with the dry racetrack, and they can start to attack the course. These two are going to get tired of seeing each other over the course of the day. They've looked like this. Either one's looking at the other's bumper, vice versa, and it's been like that since the start of today's race here in the Total Court. 200. We're well past the halfway point of this race. 32 laps in of a 50 lap, 51 lap race. 20 laps to go. And Kevin Lacroix trying to close in on Anthony Simone. Five cars on the lead lap, Dave. See, working their way up a greatly different line than they took earlier on when the track was wet as they worked through that high-speed turn three. Now 
down into turn four. You can't really see the apex of that corner as you turn in and then up to the top of the hill of turn five. Hey, now into five B. We're seeing big chunks of debris on the racetrack. I'm not sure if that's sections of rubber from the groove green tires maybe coming off in chunks. From Anthony Simone's <laughs> tires as he continues to work them pretty hard. But so far, as, as the crew has been watching, his lap time's not dropping off too dramatically. You know what's impressive to me right here is all the cars that started this race are still on the racetrack, Dave. It really is impressive because we've had some problems here in the past, but we're getting word from the pits of 76 of Caden Lapsovich has lost third gear. So that's heartbreak. Blow the motor in practice yesterday, now transmission trouble here today. Remember, that's the driver fighting for second spot in the points, but the other driver he's trying to chase is Kevin Lacroix. That's a great battle for third as Anthony Simone continues to lead. Welcome back to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, and we've got two cars side by side. They've been nose to tail for so long, and now they're door handle to door handle. Man, this is some great racing. Two drivers battling for the third position. Anthony Simone is out in front. Kevin Lacroix is second, but what a race going on for third. Boy, Andrew Ranger in the Mopar number 27, a little bump from Alex Dagley and in the low Zeppi band number 18. Robinson is racing. <laughs> How is it run? That's exactly it, and both drivers will agree that that's just good, hard NASCAR racing here in Canada. Yeah, it's hard to do that in IndyCar. Yeah, it doesn't go well with those open wheels. Andrew but, Ranger finally able to make use of that tinted visor. The sun's starting to shine around the racetrack, and what a huge crowd. Despite the weather being what it is, this crowd is really filled in. Well, take a look at from some of these onboard shots. You can see a lot of campers lining this wonderful facility. Miles Brandt, Carlo Fidani, and Ron Fellows have done another great job uh, sprucing things up even more than they had been before to attract the fans. We'll have a look down under the Canadian Tire Bridge going into turn number eight, side by side. And they maintain that through turn number eight into turn number nine. Ranger gets a little bit of an advantage. Well, they got a touch loose, but they never touched there. They did touch a little bit going into turn one, and now we don't have to measure in seconds. Now we can look at the gap in car lanes. That's about 20 car lanes between first and second. Well, I will tell you some seconds. 2.4 seconds a lap. That's how much quicker the 74 is, quicker than the 95 of Anthony Simone. There again, it almost doesn't matter, Dave. If we get a yellow flag, Anthony Simone will be able to come in, get four fresh slick tires, and come back out in the top five. Oh, and he'll feel like Superman with those four brand new Goodyear Eagles underneath him. So if I'm Anthony Simone right now, I want to run as hard as I can. I want to make Kevin Lacroix work as hard as he can to get the lead. Use up all of the rubber on Lacroix's car that he can. Because the next opportunity, he'll want to come in and get fresh rubber and then pass Lacroix back. Well, you can see Kevin Lacroix is that much quicker. He's closing car lengths nearly every turn. The wiper's still going, and Anthony Simone. And here's Clute underneath the 17 of DJ Kennington. That's for ninth spot. Power pass going into turn number one. Now, we should talk about my plan a little bit more, Dave. That only works with the yellow flag. With 37 laps, or 36 laps in to a 51-lap race, the longer you go into a race without a yellow, the, the more chance you get of not seeing a yellow come out. The other driver that's impressive is L.P. Dumoulin, right behind the 74. And here is Kevin Lacroix in the draft of the 95, Anthony Simone, down the end ready straight away. Simone knows he's there. He tried to protect the inside. Lacroix to the inside. He'll take over top spot. Driving deeper into a corner than Anthony Simone is very hard to do. But through green tires, they've only got so much in them as LP Dumoulin now trying to make that pass on Simone. Keep in mind, those tires on the 95 are now 37 laps old. And they're grooved. Like Slick's 37 laps old at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park are old tires. They're hard to drive on. Groove tires, forget about it. I'm impressed that Simone is still on the racetrack. Well, he's still on the racetrack and still in second spot. And you can look how 
how big the gap is. The leader has been able to open up now over the 95 of Simone. And how about the WeatherTech dodge of L.B. Dumoulin? You mentioned it, that he's been able to stick with the 74, and now he's managed to get around the 95. So in the event of a caution, he's the first car a lap down if we put back in the lead lap. Right, again, without a caution, he's like the 95 car. He's kind of sunk. But if we do get one, he's back in the game. It's still a wide-open race here at CTMP. Guaranteed the best place to go for good food and great fun at the Canadian Tire Motorsport Park is the Pinty's Pub and Grill in turn number two, and it's been busy all weekend long. It was busy last night. Tony Spateri and the Pinty's gang, they threw a party, Dave. There was music down there. There was chicken wings. It was a great time for the people in the campground. The, the Pinty's folks know how to have a good time, don't they? They do so. It was a lot of fun. It's been a great weekend all around. We've got a gaggle of traffic. Jason Hathaway in the Chaco 3. Right behind him, the Spectrum Premium 04, J.F. Dumoulin, and the 76 Ace Services car of Caden Lapsovich. Now, this is a battle for position. It's a dice for 12th spot. Hathaway well out on the outside in the runoff area. That's going to open up a run for the 04 of Dumoulin. And a few laps ago, I said all the cars that start the race are still in the race. Robin Buck is out of this event. Easy on the brakes for the 04 of Dumoulin. He's got the 76 of Caden Lapsovich. Third, no third gear, no problem for that young lion as he continues to try and gain some ground, get up inside the top 10. He needs to salvage as many points as he can. And that's got to be so awkward without third gear, the way he would have to shift that car. And if we stay on this shot down the straightaway, you'll really be able to see it. But halfway down the street, he should lose a lot of ground in the 0-4. You see, trailing this back is the 5 of Noel Dowler, currently sitting in 19th spot. As we mentioned, he will start the final local track race of 2017. And just ahead of this group is the 8 of Larry Jackson, Ricky Bobby for the weekend in the Wonder Bread car. Larry Jackson, as always, keeping that car out of trouble. Giving it a pretty good drive. Not quite as good as these guys battling for 12th. The red flashing light still blinking on Jason Hathaway's car. J.F. Dumoulin looks for a way around the three machine. We thought about sticking that pass to the inside of Jason Hathaway, but Dumoulin decided it wasn't going to be a good option. But you see it build his momentum out of 10 down the front straightaway. And here comes Caden Lapsovich. He'll sneak through in turn number one. Lapsovich with a great pass out of one. Now we'll try to close in on J.F. Dumoulin through turn two. Down the hill, up the hill into turn three. What a battle. And this one is one of the best on the track right now. As Kevin LaCroix continues to lead. Lapsovich up on the outside in turn number three. It takes a lot of confidence to make that move. But Caden Lapsovich has just that. Now J.F. Dumoulin could return the favor. There, did, I was just going to point out, a lack of a third gear really cost him exiting turn three. I think you're absolutely right as they work down through 5A and 5B onto the long Mario Andretti straightaway, getting ever closer to Larry Jackson. Larry Jackson will look in his rearview mirror and he'll see this group coming through. Moves to the outside as everybody pulls to the inside down the Andretti straightaway, chasing Jason Hathaway. You can see Lasovich losing ground on the straightaway again. You need all four gears in that transmission to maintain optimal speed. He's doing a heck of a job as Hathaway to the inside of Larry Jackson. Remember, the next race on the schedule is in St. Estache, Quebec, the Lucas Oil 250, and that's where Keaton Lapsovich picked up a victory in his championship run season just a year ago. It was an unlikely win, but a win nonetheless that really cemented his championship season. Ten laps to go that time by the stripe. Kevin LaCroix continues to lead the 95 of Anthony Simone still sitting in second spot. And here's Lapsovich once again up on the outside. Lapsovich with a power move to the outside of turn number two. That is not for the faint of heart. One of the big stories now, Dave, Anthony Simone in second. Can he hold on to a podium spot? Ranger and Tagliani are closing in. He's running slower lap times, but wouldn't it be great to see the 95 up on the podium today? Oh, he's had so much bad luck throughout this season in the NASCAR 50 Series. Now with nine laps to go, there is your race leader in the bumper to bumper number 74. Kevin Lacroix, the man from St. Estache, Quebec, and the 47 is still there. Still there. There's Anthony Simone hanging on to that second position. Not too far back, you'll see Tagliani and Ranger. 
That's what he does not want to see with nine laps remaining. Oh, that car is a handful. Well, as hard as he was getting on the throttle, I mean, he was using up those groove tires on a wet racetrack, let alone now that it's dry. As we look way up the track, there's a... Oh, no, that's not Tagliani. That's Gary Clute. I thought that was the 18. So he's got a lot of gap back to the 18 and the 27. And that's a battle for eight spot. Gary Clute getting around the 44 of Adam Andretti. You see the 21, Trevor Monaghan. That's a good news story. He's making his first start here today, staying out of trouble, doing a very, very good job here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Big welcome to Tom and his guests from Yvonne Insulation. It's always neat to see a new sponsor come on board. They came down, new crew shirts, the logo on the race car, a Burlington area business, Dave, and great to see them get involved with Rob McConnell and Trevor Monahan in the 21 team. And a charity also on board that car, Care for Mac Kids, the McMaster Children's Hospital. So trying to raise some money, at least raise some awareness for a really good cause on board that car, too. We have a look there at Randy Steckley talking to Tyler Case at top the pit box. This race is getting down near the end. LaCroix continues to lead. Welcome back to the 11th race of the 2017 NASCAR 50 Series. A battle for 13th. Now it's four laps to go here in the Total Courts 200. These drivers have been going at it for many, many laps. Jason Hathaway, great to see him back with the series. J.F. Dumoulin. shown improvement throughout the season. Yeah, they really have, and they've been fairly racy here today. The Spectra Premium 04, little smoke out of the back end of that car. I think that was just tires as he got hard on the gas in turn number two and slid the back end because he got a great run into three and picked up the spot. An impressive pass on the three of Jason Hathaway. Let's ride on board with Jason. Former winner here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park running a part-time schedule. And look at here, the 47 of LB Dumoulin has passed the race leader, picking up his lap, and he's managed to get around the 32 of Alex LeBay. LeBay is now sitting in sixth spot and is in jeopardy of going a lap down. He is also in jeopardy of Kevin LaCroix closing the gap and possibly cashing in on some of the threats we've heard over social media the last two weeks, Dave. Will he do it? about four car lengths to catch the Can-Am Ford Fusion of Alex LeBay, but we should mention, too, that both Alex Tagliani and the 27 of Andrew Ranger are about a second faster than Kevin Lacroix. Yeah, they're faster than Lacroix right now. They have no hope of catching him unless Kevin Lacroix has a problem as we're three laps to go. It'll be two laps when we reach the strike, and they are a long way back from the leader. Kevin Lacroix knows it. He knows how big the gap he has back to Tagliani and Andrew Ranger. He didn't push it into turn number eight to try and make that pass on the 32. And I have a feeling Lacroix, it would be wise of him to stay right where he is. You know, don't, don't poke the bear. Really, he is the bear. I think that he is the more aggressive by nature. But don't get into a situation that could, could cost you to tarnish a day that has gone just about perfectly. Well, that's Don Thompson Jr.'s influence. Reining him in, keeping him in check. Don Thompson Jr. all season long on the radio has been saying, remember the big picture. We're in this for the championship hunt. And Kevin Lacroix stands to gain a lot of championship ground in this race. Alex Tagliani in the second position. But a long way back from the race leader, Kevin Lacroix. He's managed to separate himself from the 27 Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger, though. And sadly, Anthony Simone's bid for a podium. Unless somebody in the top three has a problem, it doesn't look good for Simone. Hey, a top five doing what he did here today would still be a great run for the innovative plumbing crew. And that's not the audio. That's Kevin Lacroix. He might be saving fuel. He might be not wanting to close in on LeBay. Could be a little of both. Well, you can see Tagliani is now better than a second quicker than your race leader, Anthony Simone, about five seconds a lap slower than these top three cars. So the, the treaded tires have pretty much given up the ghost in the 95. I can't believe they've lasted. 
it this long. He could be looking at a blown tire here. That's a different storyline altogether. It's Kevin Lacroix taking the white flag. One more lap to go. He's through turn number one, just nine more turns, and he will complete his perfect run here in the Total Quartz 200. Sponsored by Total Lubricants is the 74, and there's a good look at the Lowe's EpiPen Dodge. Alex Tagliani, he's still hard on the gas, trying to make things happen. Running behind the 59 of Gary Clute, that's not for position whatsoever. Tagliani is second. Clute is locked by the leaders. And look at the ticker on the top of your screen. More than 27 seconds, the gap between Lacroix and Tagliani in second spot. And look at where the 32 of Alex LeBay is in sixth position. Came in as your points leader. Stands to lose a lot of those points to Kevin Lacroix. He will still be leading after this race, but Kevin Lacroix, if he can hang on for the win, will gain a lot of valuable points. There's a look at the Mopar 27 of Andrew Ranger. He's hanging on to the third spot. Not a bad run for Andrew Ranger, but you almost expect to see more out of that driver at a track like Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Something like Kevin Lacroix has done all day, which has not put a foot wrong. He won practice. He won qualifying. He's going to exit turn number 10, and Kevin Lacroix is going to win the race. The Total Quartz 200 to Kevin Lacroix. His fourth win of the 2017 season, Kevin Lacroix takes the checkered flag here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. We have to wait for Alex Tagliani to come through in second. There he is just now entering turn number eight. Tagliani up through turn nine. We'll try to navigate turn 10 right behind Gary Clute. He did not make that pass. As we said, it really didn't mean anything. Alex Tagliani will hold on for a second place run in the 18 car. And Andrew Ranger in the 27 is down third as he continues to make his way to the stripe. But there is your race winner. He's been so good, so dominant all weekend long in the 74. And Kevin Lacroix did what he needed to do here this weekend. Let's go down to Todd in pit lane. Todd. Here's the winning crew chief, Don Thompson Jr. You guys did exactly what you needed this weekend. Fast all weekend and another victory. Yeah, you know, you can't do it without a crew. I got to thank the bumper to bumper crew. Great job all weekend. And uh, I'd also like to thank Total, great lubricant in our racing motors. And uh, hey, what can we say? We got another one. Don Thompson Jr. will join his driver in victory lane. We'll hear from Kevin Lacroix after this. Kevin Lacroix getting a push from some of his crew members, the rest of his crew standing by here in victory lane, we'll and he's earned this celebration. He left no doubt, Dave. He won practice. He won qualifying. He won the race. He doesn't even look like he's worn out in the least. That had to be a grueling run for him. I don't even think he broke his sweat. Big smile on his face, though. And Todd's waiting there as he hops out. Kevin Lacroix climbs out. Waves that checkered flag in the air to celebrate a victory. Once again, here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, getting congratulations from the team. Kiss from his wife, Joni. For the third straight time, he is a winner here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. This was a business-like win by you and the whole team this weekend. You were fast. You went out there and did what you had to do today. Yeah, like you say, we were fast all weekend with the trap record in qualifying and just uh, in the race, uh, you know, it was also quick in the rain, just like earlier this, uh, this year. So uh, quick all the time here. I love this track, so it pays out today. Three straight wins here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Fourth of the year for Kevin Lacroix. Well, Alex, the second place finish in a hard-fought day here on the road course. Started in the wet, finished in the sun. Tell us about your afternoon. Yeah, the team did a great job. Obviously, uh, the 22 racing guys, uh, EpiPen, Lowe's, Spectra Premium, all our sponsors, uh, you know, like we really thank them for their support. It was, uh, it was an interesting race. I mean, I don't think we had the car in the wet. Uh, Kevin really strong in the wet. And um, he walked away, took a big lead. We tried to stay longer on, uh, on the wets and look at the lap time when people were putting in dries. But I was so surprised that the dry was so quick on lap one and, and we lost again at that exchange and then we can never catch him. So, uh, but nevertheless, I mean, the guys did a good job and uh, you know, good job to him. I mean, he had a really strong car today. Second place for Alex Taglani. Solid finish here at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park.
Very much so, and we'll take a look at the top 20 finishers. Some surprises here. We talked about the 95 of Anthony Simone finishing inside the top five. Yeah, that's happy news for sure. Gary Clute finishing eighth, DJ Kennington ninth. They're going to be in the truck race today. Adam Andretti with the top 10. You see Caden Lapsovich salvaging an 11th place finish here today. A little disappointing for J.F. Dumoulin in 14th. Larry Jackson coming home in 17th spot. Todd standing by with the driver of the 27th. With third place finisher Andrew Ranger, pretty wild day. Started out wet, then it got dry. You were hard charging right from the start, too. Yeah, I was happy to have the rain, you know. I started six, and uh, at that point I was second. But uh, the track started to be dry, so we, we came on the pit, changed tower. Uh, you know what? We have a pretty good race. We, we did our best. We finished third. I know we won the win, but for a Dodge Mopar Penzo car, was uh, pretty good the, today, and uh, I'm proud of them. They did a really good pit stop, and uh, at the end, you know, I was just trying to save my stuff up just in case uh, green white checker or something that will happen but uh, no no caution today so uh, anyway it's a good third finish for us and uh, very happy for my team Frank Beguet from Total Courts on the podium with Kevin Lacroix, the driver he sponsors, who also won his race, the Total Courts 200. And that's got to be a good feeling, winning your sponsor's race. Taking a look at the points, Kevin Lacroix only gains 10 points back in Alex LeBay. That 10-point penalty he got at Riverside looks huge now. He'd be within 16 without that penalty, Dave. Lapsovich and Kennington still with an outside chance at a win. And now, the champagne here on the podium at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. And Dave, we've got two oval races to close out the 17th season. This NASCAR on TSN telecast has been brought to you by Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. By E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. And by Honey Goo from Clean Flow, one honey of a loop. Next week, we head to Cena's Dash Quebec for the flattest racetrack on the planet. A tight, full ring of an oval. It will be rough. It will be tumble. A big difference from what we saw here. Kevin Lacroix, your winner here at CTMP. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.